Hey everyone, this is Chris DeFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who has been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. They are the quintessential espresso machine for the coffee industry. Dependable, beautiful, innovative. This is one of the reasons why I've loved them so much. In my own barista career over the decades, working on a La Marzocco espresso machine has been such a joy, truly. And part of the reason why is that dependability and the fact that they listen to the people that use their machines and innovate accordingly. Machines like the KB90 espresso machine with the straight in locking portafilters for ergonomics, the scales built into the drip tray for accuracy of your extractions. And there's the auto flush feature, which keeps the group heads automatically clean and improves your workflow. It's just one example of many different espresso machines that La Marzocco has for you to choose from that fit your cafe perfectly. Reach out to them over at info at lamarzocousa.com. One of their salespeople will get you outfitted with the right espresso machine for you. Be sure to check them out over on their website, lamarzocousa.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who is creating custom branded mobile apps for your coffee business, for your cafe to stand out. I mean, with Espressly, you're more than just a dot on a map. You hold the market share on your customer's phone. Your app is loud and proud. It's right there. And they get to interact with the convenience of the actual app, but also the culture and the feel of your brand that they love. And this is a no risk model when you work with Espressly. There's no setup or development fees. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All of the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems, including Square. I really encourage you if you're looking for a mobile app solution to talk with Espressly. They are there to help. They are passionate about serving the independent coffee community and it shows. To do that and sign up today, go and visit Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about power. I wanted to talk to you about giving more power to your staff. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is we often operate with a lot of shoulds. We talk about what people should do and we expect them to do X, Y, and Z. We write job descriptions that have a whole laundry list of expectations. And we think that if we give the right words and instructions and that kind of stuff to people that we're going to magically hire the right people. We're also going to get those people to magically do the right things consistently with no problems. And if there are problems, the first thing that we think is, ah, I, I, I just guess I can't, it's hard to find good help or I didn't, you know, hire right and that kind of thing. Well, honestly, it has a lot to do with how we've empowered our staff and empowering them to make decisions in the roles that they have is one of the things that we constantly need to be thinking about. One of the episodes that we've done has been talking about truly empowering staff at the register, for example. I'll link to that in the show notes. I will for a couple of other related episodes, but I want to go through a series of questions. These questions will help you kind of root out whether or not you are being a little bit unfair or a little bit hard on people about the expectations that you have of them, but maybe you haven't really facilitated the situation properly. Okay, so let's go through these. The first question would be, did you tell them? And it sounds like a funny question to ask. Did you tell them? <laughs> well, I shouldn't have to tell them. Well, you do. You do have to tell them. As I'm fond of saying to people at Coffee Fest, for example, you have to tell people how to sweep. Not everybody knows how to do that. You know, we're in the era of Swiffer too, by the way. And so the idea of using an actual broom might be like completely backwards to some people. But the point is, is beyond that, we often assume that people should intuit the things that are on our mind. We don't actually get around to telling them. And even if we did tell them, you are telling them something potentially in the midst of an amygdala hijack where they feel under stress. They hear it once and it just goes truly maybe in one ear and out the other, not because of a fault of theirs necessarily, but just human biology. When was the last time that somebody told you something just once and you automatically just remembered it and did it and were passionate about it and et cetera? This is what we think people should do. 
in our employment, even though we ourselves probably don't exhibit the same kind of iron trap mind that we think everybody else should have. And so the question you have to ask is, did you tell them what you want them to do? Okay. And also maybe you can ask, did you tell them how to do it? What the detailed expectations of that thing are, or do they have tools to do it? You know, the other question you could ask is, can they do that? Can they do that? Now, if you say, yes, they can really quickly, I'm going to kind of dwell on that a little bit. And I'm going to say, how do you know they can do that? And you could say, well, because I do it. That's a good answer. If you do the things that you expect other people to do and you know it's possible, that's great. But for a lot of people, what ends up happening is they're not working as many shifts anymore. They have a staff of people and then they have new responsibilities that need to be put into the role. And they automatically think that because they write it down on a piece of paper that it can be done. But have you actually watched your bar lately and sat there and just examined it with a curious mind and then thought, you know, some of these expectations I have of my baristas to do X, Y, and Z in so many minutes, it's, you know, at the top of this hour or that hour, it's not realistic. It's just not. And the only way I can tell that is if I leave room first for being wrong. That's a big one, but also leave room to be informed by the constant changing and evolution of your business. If I just said, okay, well, my son, who's nine, used to be four, and I think I should just treat him like he's four all of his life because I was comfortable with that, you know, that's not going to really do much for him at this age. It's not going to make me a good father. And, you know, I haven't updated my way of going about things because I'm not paying attention. What am I paying attention to? I don't know. But, you know, the point is, is that in that analogy, I can't expect the kind of results that I want if I'm using a methodology of management and instruction and intention that's meant for the version of my business that's old, right? So what's your business need now? What do the people in your business need to run the business as it exists now? You need to always be refreshing that. Now, the other question you can ask yourself is how can you help? How can I help you? That's a question you could ask your staff directly. How can I help you? Now, that doesn't mean, you know, you're signing up to just take their shifts all the time or just do the work for them. But how can I help you be facilitated to do this work? And people, as I've said here before, they need to have repetition because they don't necessarily trust you right away. They need to know that you actually want to help. So you might need to ask these things many times in order for it to actually be a trusted question, like a genuine question, and not just the question that managers ask because they heard it on a podcast. You know, <laughs> it has to be actual, authentically you, and, and only you have charge over how that actually is perceived. So how can you help would come up with a lot of answers. A lot of it just is clarifying, it's resourcing, it's training, lots of different ways, but you have to be willing to hear the answer in order to ask the question. If you ask the question, how can you help? Or say to your baristas, like, how can I help? And they say something that you say, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Short of actually you doing the work, you should actually have thought through what you're willing to commit to beforehand. And I see people do this all the time where they ask the question, almost assuming that the person's just going to be like, oh, nothing, I'm fine. And it's a lot like asking the question, how are you? You don't expect people to say something negative. They say, I'm fine. How are you? Now, we can't operate on an I'm fine basis in our coffee shops. If we really want our business to work under pressure, people are under pressure when they come in as customers. We are under pressure to operate it. We can't just put the mask on every single day without truly having some authenticity in the way that we communicate and at least being dedicated to meeting each other where we're at and getting to the next level together, truly together. And the last question I think you really need to ask yourself is what are they responsible for specifically? And that comes back down to the idea of detailed expectations, considering that you have resourced them properly, and you can honestly say that you have, and there's a resourcing episode you should listen to in the show notes here. What is their particular responsibility that will make it easy for them to say, ah, here I am. I'm at the POS. I'm at the back bar. I'm out in the cafe. 
here's what my responsibilities are specifically. We don't want general, we want specific because that creates a better outcome and creates a more specific outcome. If you want something specific, you have to communicate something specific. That's the way it works. So you're in charge of creating tools and expectations and problem solving as the owner, as the manager. And part of this is not just giving people instructions to prevent them from doing bad things. It's to allow them to do great things. And your systems have to involve not only constant coaching and management, but also constant affirmation and encouragement. And I'll leave you with that. That's the way you give more power to them. And through that, you empower everybody to enjoy your coffee and coming to your coffee shop. So I hope that this was helpful. And let me know. You can always email me, give me your thoughts, make comments on Instagram at keys to the shop. You know, that's uh, where we live on IG. So if you're not following Keys to the Shop on Instagram, go ahead and do that and give me your comments on what you think about today's episode. I really appreciate you joining me today. And as always, I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.